Welcome to the Kearsarge Chronicle. I'm your host, Lynn Solomon. For the next three weeks, we are coming to you from Go Lightly Consignment Boutique. Their tagline is, for a few dollars, look like a million. Nothing makes them happier than to see a woman step out from the dressing room wearing a fabulous new look and a huge smile. The women's store has recently been renovated, and if you haven't been to the home store, that is a must-see as well. Stop in soon to catch all the latest fall fashions and updates for your home. We'll learn more about Go Lightly Consignment Boutique in the next coming weeks. On today's show, we'll meet Allison Vernon, owner of Go Lightly Consignment. Scott Blewett will join us to talk about Party with a Purpose coming up on October 22nd, a massive chili cook-off to support our local nonprofits. Home Care Matters shows us how a combination drug treatment reduces agitation for Alzheimer's patients. Members of the USS Kearsarge come for a visit in our area. And Burton Kirkwood, president of Kearsarge Youth Hockey, will be here to tell us all about the terrific skating programs they have for our area as the weather turns colder. Stay tuned, it's all coming up on this week's edition of the Kearsarge Chronicle, hosted by Go Lightly Consignment. Welcome back. We're here at Go Lightly Boutique, and joining me now is owner Allison Vernon. Thanks for hosting us. Thank you, Lynn. This is just a gorgeous little corner. I'm sure it changes every week. It changes every day. <laughs> it changes every day. Yes, it does, better. actually. Yeah. Actually, one of your workers came in, and she was looking for the price on the table. I was like, don't take it now. We need it for a couple more hours. Um, but really, what an amazing assortment. You've got two sides of the hall here. Yes, we do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did this all happen? Well, it's a fun story, actually. We had two people come to us, coincidentally, um, in one week, and both said, I need help. Will you consider selling my home goods? I have to, um, one was um, downsizing mm -hmm. and needed help fast. And the other, his wife had just died and he, his house had sold and he needed to vacate. And both homes were full of treasures. Mm -hmm. So we made room in our children's store for okay. uh, to do some home goods sales. And it just just took off like a rocket and we ended up loving it and um, morphed kids out and morphed home goods in and oh. it's been it's been a great business a lot of fun I've learned I can't even begin to tell you how much I've learned about everything <laughs> stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I great. can see that. I can't believe the array of items you have. So let's talk a little bit about that yeah. because everything that we are sitting on is part of the consignment store. It is. And consignment means that we don't own any of it. Mm -hmm. It belongs to other people. We are a venue for them to sell their stuff. Right. Um, uh, for the most part, the smaller tchotchke pieces, uh, they get 40% um, of the sale. We get 60%. The smaller things require a lot more work uh, to stage and to move around. And, right. Um, and then the larger items, like for instance, this couch, uh, it would be a 50-50 split. That's a great deal. Yeah, yes, when, it's great. I mean, because you really are helping, particularly in those two instances that you said, people really had to get that stuff out of there. Oh, and we hear this all the time. Uh, and uh, we have people who come in and say they have just absorbed their parents, um, all their parents' stuff into their home, their oh, grandparents' stuff, yeah. and they're overwhelmed. Yes. They have storage units, uh, they have bins in their garage, mm -hmm. and um, and stuff can be very stressful. Right. Um, the other thing is that stuff has a personality for some people, real memories, and, and, and they have uh, treasured memories right and to give up some of that stuff is very hard and yet it has to go they have no room but what is happening in our store is that someone will come along and see that treasure mm -hmm. and 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 get very excited about it and then that treasure has a whole uh, new lifespan 
in someone else's it. home and it keeps going. It's just, yeah. it's very magical. You can pass the love along from yeah. one home to another. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. Um, as we were talking off camera, it's the ultimate in recycling. It is the ultimate in recycling and there's no reason to buy new furniture when you can buy excellent mm -hmm. uh, pre-owned furniture that is quality yes and beautiful and well made I think you're getting a better deal frequently particularly in furniture because the new stuff is all made out of plywood I mean you can get a real solid old piece at right. a fraction of the cost exactly mm -hmm. exactly dovetailed and yes. solid oak or mm -hmm. or maple and we have a white birch bureau that's oh, just gorgeous nice. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, can you help the people with the pricing too? Because that to me would seem daunting. In fact, that is the way it works, is okay. that we set the price. We research pieces and uh, we look for markings. Uh, we go on eBay using eBay as a reference quite often, yeah. but we will also use uh, other references on internet. And we have some very brilliant, talented people in town mm -hmm. that we will contact and ask them for their help on pricing items. Good. Uh, but we do a lot of homework and then we price items to sell because we can't sit on this this furniture. We can't sit on these items. So mm -hmm. we we price them just under what eBay might sell them for. Yeah. And move them on. And then and then it's great. Everybody has a check in their hand and it's terrific. Yes, so that's, that's great. right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Or they can use the um, you have it, uh, the money on their account and use oh. it to shop if they are in the market. Buy for more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it over. Yeah. I love that. Well, well, congratulations. It's amazing how quickly this end of the business has just gone skyrocketing. Yeah. So it has amazed us as well. Great. Well, yeah. we've got your information up on the screen if anybody Good. needs and to shop or consign. Website. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very good. GoLightlyHome.com. It's all there. Oh, good. So you have an exclusive one just for this. That's just for this. That's right. Excellent. Good. And then a phone call to lovely and talented people like yourself is always nice, too. Oh, so thank you. Well, thanks. Well, we're going to be here for the next three weeks. Great. So very good. We're very happy to have you. Take care. Thanks. All right. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Up next, Scott Blewett of New London Recreation will be here to tell us about a massive chili cook-off featuring some of our favorite nonprofits coming your way next weekend. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're here at Go Lightly Boutique, and joining me now from New London Recreation is Scott Blewett. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. October is always a fun month for New London Recreation, isn't it? It's such a great month. I love October. The smells, the sounds, <laughs> yeah. the, the warm days, the cool nights. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. we're going to get to smell some chili in a couple weeks, aren't we? The 22nd of October. Yes. Created a great event. Um, actually, the idea came to me. Um, I give Keith Hansen from WNTK the credit. Mm -hmm. I've been part of chili festivals and chowder festivals in the past, and he's like, let's, let's do one in New London. Okay. So I kind of talked it up to various people, and then I got some ideas in my head. Um, so on Saturday, October 22nd, from 4 to 7 at the New London Historical uh, Society on Little Lake Sunapee Road, or Route 114, we're going to have a party with a purpose. Love it. So it's and it's benefiting a ton of nonprofits, all of which are familiar to us. It is, um, and and because I got to kind of create this from scratch, mm -hmm. what I wanted to do is um, have a fundraiser for a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. So I've reached out to 13 different nonprofit organizations based in New London, and uh, so anybody who comes. Um, pays a ten dollar fee. Mm -hmm. uh, all the money is going to go back to those organizations. Yep. And do, are each of the organizations making their own secret recipe of they, chili? Yes. So oh. each organization is required, or well, part of it, is to bring two crock pots of chili. Okay. And some of the organizations, like the Elkins Fish and Game, are going to bring two different types because they're going to put some some wild game into it. Sure. I was thinking that. Yes. yes. Okay. So it should be fun. I'm not. Don't know if they're going to use mo moose or elk or uh -huh. or venison, and then the the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Lake Sunapee Region Chamber of Commerce, is going to make turkey chili. Okay. Uh, the Outing Club, um, I th they one or two different types of chili, and then the New London Recreation Department. Uh, NH Kittens is going to be there. Oh, cute. <laughs> yes. So fun. So for ten dollars, you get to sample all of those different. For ten dollars. 
you'll get wow. three four ounce sample right. of each chili you know a couple spoonfuls huh? um, just to uh, kind of that's great get a taste and uh, yeah so 13 different chilies mm -hmm. your 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 belly will be full that sounds like l night off from cooking dinner for me that I, that's very tempting it's a great yeah. <laughs> night um, we'll have some music there we'll have um, you'll also get a water you got to have something to clean your palate mm -hmm. oh nice it'll be entertainment and, and a nice day in the village too a nice the village is beautiful it's going to be inside the barn mm -hmm. so no matter what the weather we're still going to have it super and hopefully this brings 300 people. It's the first annual. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Super. It's great to do fun well, stuff. Well, good. Well, but you're doing some other things in October. You've got a nice senior trip planned. Yes. I took my first uh, group of seniors to the Ben and Jerry's factory last week, and they had such a great time. They, they gave me all kinds of ideas. So the next trip is going to be to the Vermont Country Store mm -hmm. in Western Vermont. Yeah. And um, we're going to go on Thursday, October 27th. The van will leave, my new rec van, yes. will leave from Whipple Hall at 9 a.m., and uh, we'll do some shopping, and there's all kinds of little samples of crackers and cheese there. Nice. And then we'll go out for lunch and come home and be home by 3. Oh, that's a nice day out. Nice that's day out. Very, it's $20 nice. a person, which covers the transportation costs. Right. And just a fun nice day. Nice day out with friends. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's great. And then, of course, Halloween. Halloween is always a fun time in New London. It sure is. So this year, Halloween, October 31st, is on a Monday, mm -hmm. and everything is going to take place on that day. Mm -hmm. uh, the police department block off Main Street, oh, and nice. that'll happen from 4 to 8 p.m. Yes. Um, so very safe trick-or-treating. And behind the old middle school, just off Main Street, is where I do the haunted walk and the candy walk. Right. So the candy walk is going to take place from 5 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And that's for little kids, and they it's not scary at all. Right. They just right. come, and they get some candy. Uh, we're also going to have um, a teal pumpkin. Uh, the teal pumpkin project is for kids that have allergies. Yes. So we will have some alternatives to candy right. um, for those that choose to, to take. And then the scary walk, the haunted <laughs> for walk. For the teenagers. <laughs> only for the brave <laughs> from uh, 7 to 8.30 mm -hmm. behind the old middle school. Um, it is a free event, but donations are encouraged because the proceeds go back to the Colby Sawyer players, the drama group that oh. facilitate the event for the community. They're all the scary monsters that night, huh? Yes. Oh, that's so much fun. Great. Um, we've got such great collaboration in this town. I mean, look at that. You're having a chili fest. It's going to help all the nonprofits. You have Colby Sawyer helping you. It's just a great place to be. It's a fantastic community. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can see it now just going up and down Main Street and seeing all the pumpkin people. Right, exactly. So that's a fun. Well, October is always a great month. Thank you so much. Thanks for everything you do to keep our community great. Thank you. Take care. Up next, our Lake Sunapee Region v and and Hospice has a new Home Care Matters for us, and we'll get a glimpse inside a recent trip from members of the USS Kearsarge. We'll be back in a flash. Home Care Matters is presented by the Lake Sunapee Region v and Hospice. I'm Jim Culhane. As a public service, we bring this Journal of the American Medical Association look at a combination drug treatment which reduces agitation in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Let's join them now. Lori Gabello is very familiar with hospitals and doctor's offices. Her father has Alzheimer's disease and her mother, dementia, but it wasn't always that way. They were extremely active. They traveled a lot. They were extremely social. Now in full-time care, both of Lori's parents have frequent bouts of agitation. When people do come in to help him with his showers or his daily care and stuff, he does get extremely agitated. She gets very upset and very agitated, no matter what it is, what they're serving for dinner, the fact that they play the same music over and over. These are the things that make caregiving so extremely difficult when there is a violent or aggressive reaction by the patient. Dr. Jeffrey Cummings from the Cleveland Clinic and co-authors recruited 220 patients with Alzheimer's dementia and agitation. During a preliminary 10-week trial, participants were randomly assigned to receive either the combination of dextromethorphan and quinidine or a placebo. The dextromethorphan-quinidine combination had a substantial effect in reducing agitation and far greater than was seen in the placebo-treated patients. The study appears in JAMA. Journal of the American Medical Association. And we showed that the drug was safe and effective. Dr. Cummings says there also appeared to be benefit for the caregivers of these patients. 
there was a reduction in the stress experienced for caregivers of the patients who were treated with the dextromethorphan quinidine combination. Although caring for her parents is sometimes overwhelming, Lori takes comfort in knowing they have lived full lives. They did not not do anything that they set their heart out to do that was on their bucket list. They did all of it. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. For more information on all of our health-related services and more, log on to our new website. Join us again next week for more important health information. The Lake Sunapee Region VNA and Hospice, where home care matters. Thanks, Jim. Up next, a group of Master Chiefs and candidates from the USS Kearsarge descend on Warner, New Hampshire and ascend their namesake mountain. The community comes together for every visit to show their hospitality and welcomes them. Let's take a look. This started back in 2000. There was a person that was running the town's website that started conversing with the command master chief on the Kearsarge. And as a result of that, a number of us from the Legion uh, took and went down to the Kearsarge and, uh, and we sailed on it up to Boston and they had a uh, banquet it's up in, up in the Boston area. And, and since then, uh, a number of other trips have resulted in the crew members coming aboard to reacquaint with Mount Kearsarge and uh, the namesake uh, from the ship and also with the residents of Warner. And, and Warner has kind of uh, looked at them in, in good favor and with the chiefs coming up, it gives us an opportunity that we wouldn't normally have to acquaint with the military service. So today we're up with the FY17 Chief Petty Officer Selectees and we, we come up here every year because the heritage and the history to the, the Chief Petty Officers is paramount. So to be able to bring the sailors up here and connect them with the, the actual history of the USS Kearsarge is very important to us. So the first Kearsarge was actually built with wood um, from this mountain. Uh, it was named after the mountain. Plus you get to come up here to Warner to where community actually still means something. Uh, the ship that carries it now is uh, LHD. It's an amphibious uh, warship with, uh, we launch helicopters, amphibious craft. There's about a thousand Navy crew and then there's approximately 3,000 total when we have the Marines on board. We just concluded a deployment. Uh, we came back May 3rd and we left over October 6th. We're, we're the guys and gals that, that make the stuff run. So it's not, you don't see it a lot. We're the, we're the middle management. The only way to describe it really is, you know, you, when you drive down the highway, you don't look under your hood to see that it's running. You just know that it's running. It's kind of a pyramid scope. So, you know, the higher up you go, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's lonely at the top, but the, the burden of responsibility for the leadership, the care and feeding of your sailors is, is what we do. Seven or eight of us on the committee and gone through it and do the planning. We go through for the lunch that they had here, uh, climb the mountain, and then this evening there's a community supper where all the residents of Warner are, are invited in the surrounding area. Tomorrow, uh, they'll come and visit the telephone museum, the fire museum, and the Indian museum. In addition to that, some of the covered bridges in town and uh, one of the uh, sugar shacks. Thank you to these men and women who serve our country, and thank you for visiting our beautiful area. When we return, we'll meet Burton Kirkwood of Kearsarge Youth Hockey. If you have a young skater in your home, you won't want to miss this interview. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're here at Go Lightly Boutique in New London, and joining me now is Burton Kirkwood. He's president with Kearsarge Youth Hockey. Good afternoon. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us. You're oh welcome. yeah, sure. Tell us a little bit about the history of Kearsarge Youth Hockey. Uh, well, we are in our 41st year with um, members from around the New London community, mm -hmm. and we have um, 80 kids participating this year. Wow. Not in the learn to skate or learn to play. Okay. This is with the teams. Just on the teams. Yes. Yeah. What are the age groups of the kids on the teams? Well, they run 16 to teenagers. 
Okay. You know, so, okay. excuse me, six to teenagers. Okay. Me. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. So, all right. So, and how many divisions are there? Are, does there that four. comprise? Yeah. Oh, that's there quite There are mites, a few. squirts, peewees, and bantams. Okay. Now we have a possibility of midgets, but those are 16 and older, and typically they're playing at high school or private clubs. They've gotten onto a high school team by then, right, probably. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's terrific. Wow, I didn't realize yeah. it had been around for that long. It is. It's a really neat, locally, uh, community-driven program. Mm -hmm. Totally volunteer-based. Uh, we align with different corporations and uh, community members. And uh, it's my introduction to hockey in New Hampshire, and it's been a wonderful introduction. Oh, terrific. Yeah. I just started with my son, who's uh, nine, mm -hmm. when he started skating now five years ago at age four. Okay. And I was sitting on the bench. Uh, just watching uh, in the stands at Proctor Academy. Yeah. And now I'm the president. <laughs> All <laughs> so, right, that's how it happens. That's how it happens, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Talk a little bit about the Learn to Skate program. Well, the Learn to Skate is, are for children who, uh, and for adults, uh, who want to learn how to skate, and they've never been on skates, and it's a wonderful introductory uh, way to begin skating. Yeah. Uh, we have volunteer coaches who are associated with Kearsarge Youth Hockey, and some community members, there's a couple people also from Proctor Academy who help. Mm -hmm. We meet um, Sunday afternoon, starting in November, at 1.30 at Proctor Academy, and you can borrow skates, you can get skates through Kearsarge Youth Hockey Gear Skate, Gear and skate squap. Yes. And uh, and we will walk you through getting your skates on. Uh, we nice. will show the uh, people how to have their helmets ready. You have to have skates. You have to have helmets. Okay. That's mandatory. Yeah. And then um, we have uh, ice, or excuse me, uh, milk crates that are laced together, and uh, the people push their uh, milk crates around. Mm -hmm. And the goal is, and so far we're successful. Um, nobody's ever been on milk crates past uh, the eighth week. And it's really, it's a phenomenal thing to watch. I mean, Absolutely. to see people who have uh, really struggled in the first couple of times. I mean, anybody who's been on skates remembers that. Yes. And so to you. watch this transition, uh, it's really a terrific thing to watch. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. I love that it's for all ages, too. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we see, um, you know, younger kids and then even adults who are out there who are mm -hmm. giving it another go or first time or have moved to New Hampshire and want to get involved. Is it once a week? It's once a week on Sundays, mm -hmm. and then uh, it goes 1.30 to 2.30, and then Proctor has an open skate, and so most people stay for another hour uh, to just practice. And the kids can, the people who are on the, the crates can stay on the crates, but most people, by, after an hour of practicing, uh, they're a little work. worn out. Yes. Yeah. And the, as, as everybody would remember who skated, that those first couple of sessions, after an hour, they're done, they're right. tired, and uh, they're ready to go home. You have muscles in your legs you didn't realize you, didn't you realize had. You have, exactly. Yeah, oh, so. that's really wonderful. So you're still accepting um, enrollment for that? Yeah, the Learn to Skate will start, um, I think it's Sunday, November 8th, mm -hmm. when we first start, and we have two six week sessions. Uh, and they'll run to the end of the year and then start the first Sunday after the new year, mm -hmm. and it's every Sunday. And, then, uh, and what some people do is they'll go to different rinks depending on where they live and try to practice in that capacity. Right, but, right. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some ponds that are frozen this winter, too. Yeah, unlike last year. <laughs> right. I hope so. Right, sure, sure. Yeah, because so. that's really the quintessential New England experience is to be able to pond skate and pond hockey, too. Oh, yeah, that's what I've heard all about. Of um, So many people I've met who have uh, grew up around here skating on the lakes and the ponds and playing pond hockey, and they all remember it with um, that's right. clear, obvious delight. Yeah, and it, so. I think skating is a lot like riding a bike. Once you learn how to do it, it's just, it comes right back to you yeah. once you get those skates yeah. laced up. So, yeah. well, great, well, we've, you've got a great website. So we've got some Thank information you. up yeah. on the screen. Um, yeah. If anyone's looking to the, to the Learn to Skate, and possibly you might have some room for some other players in the league. We do, in Let's some of the programs. I would urge parents who are thinking about enrolling their children to uh, check the website, mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to me or to other members on the board of directors yeah. uh, to make some inquiries. Uh, we have ongoing payment schedules through, oh, the, uh, through the end of the year. So if parents are thinking about mm -hmm. um, doing that, they could look into that. I'd also like to plug that we have, uh, for folks, folks thinking about it, uh, we have opportunities to get uh, gear that we have, and so to reach out to members of the board. At a better um, price. Because sometimes, yeah. well, a lot of times we will simply give it a, uh, to somebody for really a, nice. a very small nominal donation. Yeah. Uh, this is a chance. Uh, my son's first pair of skates was a $10 donation to Kearsarge. Nice. And, uh, and now he's in his fifth year. So. Well, it's obviously a great program. Been around for 41 years. It has. So hope you have a nice winter. We do. We're, we're hopeful for it. So thank you very Super. much. Super. Thank yeah. you, Bert. Yeah. I'd like to thank our host location for these next three weeks. Go Lightly Consignment. Two showrooms of women's clothing, accessories, jewelry, shoes, and more. Plus, 
their all new home store with furniture, fine artwork, plates, dishes, and home decor. If you haven't been to Go Lightly in New London next to Colonial Pharmacy, put it on your list to do now. Next week, we'll be back at Go Lightly Consignment. We'll catch some of the antique cars recently on display at Sunafee Cove. Home Care Matters brings us research on low vitamin D and its association with a faster decline in cognitive function. Holly Solera, manager here at Go Lightly, will join us to talk about the amazing collections of clothing and home goods. Sean catches Bill Meadows of The Local. And Elizabeth Terrazio is lucky enough to sample Harpoon Brewery seasonal beers in a terrific segment from their Windsor, Vermont brewery. Our popular game of the week has a new Monday night premiere at 7.30 p.m. on this channel with replays at 10.30 that same night and Sunday afternoons at 1.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. This week we catch last year's champions Newport as they face off against Mascoma. A special thank you to Larks and Nightingales for their assistance with wardrobe and JL Hair Designs for makeup and hairstyling today. I'm Lynn Solomon. Join me again as Go Lightly Boutique hosts us next week at this same time for another Kearsarge Chronicle.